Alright guys, welcome to another tutorial. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the CNC machine to actually cut out our corrugated plastic designs. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Okay, so what you're looking at here are the tools that we use uh, for cutting plastic. On the left there, that is the ratchet for tightening the post all the way on the right. There in the middle are the drag knife tool blade and the scoring wheel. So as we talked about, the scoring wheel can be oriented both vertically and horizontally in this post. And now we'll take a look at actually loading the machine up with the plastic. What you're going to want to do is make sure that the flutes are nice and perpendicular with the table. You want them to be nice and straight. Also, we're going to turn on the suction pump right there and also turn the spindle motor off and the main engine on. Those are those two engine bays right there next to the CNC machine. So now we're going to look at how we actually mount uh, the post and the scoring wheel. We always do the scoring wheel first just to make sure that it is nice and vertical in orientation with the plastic. So we load it up, we get it nice and vertical with the plastic as you see right there, and we'll go ahead and tighten these set screws with the ratchet. Next, we're going to zero the scoring wheel. Here is the zero block. We'll put it in contact with a piece of metal and get the keyboard and bring the head down close to the scoring block. You can use the keyboard just like a video game. Uh, the arrows are your directionality, left, right, up, back, and then use page up and page down to actually bring the motor head up and down in the vertical direction. So once our head is uh, where we want it, we can go to the software and actually see how we can zero these things. So here is a image of the software that we use. We use Mock Pro, and what you'll see in the top middle up there is 0x and 0y. We'll go ahead and select those once our post is at the 0, 0 point that we want on the table. Wherever we want our origin to be, that's where we can 0x and 0y. Now for zeroing the z-axis, we do not press 0z. We actually go down to the auto tool 0 pane right here. Go ahead and click that and it'll pop up a window. We'll deselect x-axis and deselect y-axis, only leaving the z-axis to be zeroed. And once we do that, the machine slowly brings the tool down to the zero pad and touches it. That contact makes an electrical connection with the machine, and it knows that that is a new zero point. The reason it says one and a half inches is because that's the thickness of that actual zero block. So that's how you can zero the different tools. It is very important that when you go from scoring to cutting, that you re-zero the tool. The drag knife is actually a little bit longer than the scoring wheel itself, so that tool does need to be re-zeroed every time you go from scoring to cutting. <clears throat> After we have our tool zeroed, we can go ahead and load our G-codes. So for loading the G-codes over here on the left-hand side, it says load G-code, and we'll find our flash drive and find the file that we want. The machine right now is set up for vertical scoring, so I go ahead and press vert and press open. And then you'll see that G-code auto-populate up here on the right side to make sure that you have the vertical scores on. Once that's correct, you can press cycle start. Uh, once you press it once, it'll flash that yellow bar at you telling you, hey, make sure you have the right tool. Just go ahead and press start again to initiate uh, the machining. And we'll see what that looks like right here. So this is what vertical scores are going to look like. And once the vertical scores are done, we'll go ahead and take the lock pin out orient the wheel 90 degrees and now we have horizontal scores set up you can see the wheel there is is set up to go left to right across the plastic and we'll go back to the machine we'll load uh, the horizontal scores up and we'll go ahead and press start twice and start that so now we're going to switch to cutting and remember whenever we switch to cutting we do need to re-zero the tool so that's what we're looking at now i'm going to take the uh, scoring wheel out put the drag knife back in and make sure that you put that little metal magnet on a piece of metal. It has to be on a piece of metal. And then just bring that blade down close to the scoring block and, and zero it out, just how I told you with the auto tool zero shortcut. So now you'll see what the, uh, the profile path looks like. Remember during our uh, V-carve tutorial that we have a two passes whenever we're cutting. So you just saw the first pass there. Now the blade will go a little bit deeper and run through its second pass. So once this thing's cut out, uh, we'll go ahead and take it off of the table and show you our finished product. We have a finished flat box here that we can take off the scoring table and go get some hot glue on it and actually make, make a final product. So the only thing different 
whenever you are whenever you're cutting foams as opposed to plastics are is the tool so what you're looking at here is what's called a collar a collar fits what's called a collet a collet fits what's called an end mill so those three things are what you need in order to cut foams a collar a collet and an end mill so you see how i put these things together the collet goes into the collar just like that and we'll go ahead and slide the end mill up into that collet and now you have a, a, a complete set ready to go ahead and screw on to the end of the spindle motor and begin milling out some foams. You can see um, we took the scoring post off and that exposed the threads that we can tighten that collar on. There you go. You do need to have uh, these two wrenches here, these two torque wrenches that will tighten the collar to the actual spindle motor head you, this is a very important step because this also tightens the end mill into the collet so actually we do have a little bit of vacuum pumps so whenever we are uh, cnc milling we do have a series of vacuum pumps here this on the right is the the vacuum pump so we can switch that on after we implement our um, after we put our sweeper onto it to catch the debris <coughs> After we put our debris shield on, we can go ahead and turn on the suction pump motor. So there you go. That catches all that foam that's spraying out and makes sure that the, the CNC area stays clean. So that's it, guys. Once you're done with using the CNC machine, make sure you pick everything up off of it. Never leave a job on the CNC machine. Leave it how you found it. And if you have any questions, don't be afraid to come and ask me. Thanks, guys.